In this video, we're gonna look at some of the best brands in the world and the brand strategies behind them. And then we're gonna talk about how to develop a brand strategy for yours or your client's brand. My name is Arik Dvornichak and at eBig Design, my mission is to help people build and design iconic brands. Okay, so there are seven key elements of brand strategy. Brand purpose, vision, values, positioning, personality, tone of voice, and a tagline. And I will give you two very different examples for each so that in total you will get 14 examples of famous brands and the strategies behind them. Okay, so starting with brand purpose. Now the goal of a brand's purpose is to define the greater good behind your work and then talk about it to rally your team and foster a connection with your audience. So your brand's purpose is expressed by your purpose statement, which is a short sentence describing the why behind your work as a brand. So why does your company exist? Why you do what you do? and why should anyone care? So Tesla is a great example of a purpose-driven brand. Now Tesla believes in clean, sustainable energy and saving our planet. And their purpose statement is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, which is a great way to go about your brand purpose, to tie the brand to a greater cause like saving our planet. So Tesla believes that electric vehicles can be better, quicker, and more fun to drive than gasoline cars. But today Tesla builds not only all electric vehicles, but also infinitely scalable clean energy generation and storage solutions. So as you can learn from this example, your purpose statement should be open for future expansion. Tesla's purpose statement doesn't just focus on cars specifically, but it's about something bigger. It believes in general that the faster the world stops relying on fossil fuels, the better. And this can be manifested through electric cars, but also other products that would fulfill that promise. Now, another great but very different example would be Disney's brand purpose, which on the other hand talks about its quest to create joy and magic. We create entertainment and experiences that foster moments of magic and wonder for all families. So Disney's origins trace back to 1923 when Walt Disney founded an animated film studio in Hollywood. However, over the decades, Disney expanded beyond movies into theme parks, toys, books, and more. And Disneyland's opened from California to China. But even as the company grew into a global empire, Disney held onto its founding purpose to bring joy and magic to people. So just to sum up, your brand purpose will inspire your employees to come to work, but it will also give your customers a clear reason why they should engage with your brand, so that ultimately your brand can play an invaluable, irreplaceable role in people's lives. And later in this video, I will show you how to actually define your brand purpose. But for now, let's talk about the second very important element of your brand strategy, which is your brand vision. A clear vision guides company's journey to future success. So Starbucks' vision statement reflects its aspirations to become the pinnacle of coffee to be the premier purveyor of the finest coffee in the world. So Starbucks began in 1971 as a local Seattle coffee shop, and in just a few years, Starbucks went from a local shop to over 30,000 stores globally. So this vision inspired Starbucks to revolutionize the coffee industry, and they offer premium beans sourced from all around the world, and baristas receive extensive trainings to craft beverages to perfection, and their stores cause the atmosphere atmosphere fosters community. So this vision drove Starbucks' rapid expansion, but without compromising on quality. And another great example here would be Airbnb and its brand vision to create a world where anyone can belong anywhere. So Airbnb was funded in 2008 by two students who were just struggling to pay rent and as a creative solution they put air mattresses on their living room floor and then rented them out to people attending conferences in San Francisco. And this sparked the idea for Airbnb, a platform where people could easily rent out their home or spare room. So the founders saw an opportunity to help people monetize their extra living space. So Airbnb started with a simple air mattress, but from the beginning, it sets its sights on lofty goals to transform travel and human connection. So as you can see, you need to describe the future your brand is ultimately working towards. And this will inspire and energize your staff 
but it will also help you dream big and influence long-term business decisions. So the next key element of your brand strategy is about brand values. And your values are all about how you do things. So it's about coming up with some principles on how you run your business, which in turn will define the experience for your customers, your suppliers and partners, and the wider public in general. Now, Steve Jobs, who was also the company's chief brand evangelist, used to say, marketing is about values. It's a complicated and noisy world, and we are not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. Accessibility to ensure people with physical limitations are not left out. Education, provide educational resources to schools across the United States. Environment, build products that are safe for both the users and the environment. Inclusion and diversity, to create products that serve everyone. We believe in including everyone. Supply responsibility, hold suppliers and partners responsible for creating quality products for our users. And privacy, offer the utmost security for the user. Privacy is a fundamental human right. So if you are a founder, but you are not clear about what your brand stands for, then how you can expect others to know? So you see, you need to be like Steve Jobs and also be your own chief brand evangelist. And a great example here would be also YouTube with their core values based on four essential freedoms. Freedom of expression, freedom of information, freedom of opportunity, and freedom to belong. So with these four values, YouTube creates an environment where people get an opportunity to share ideas, to express themselves, to find any information they're looking for, and they get a chance to discover something new and belong to a community. So just to sum up, your values stand at the very core of your brand and they guide business processes. So just remember, your core values must be actionable so that your staff knows how to actually act upon them. And together with your purpose and vision, they shape the company's brand core. Now let's talk about brand positioning. So the goal of a brand's positioning is to find that differentiator and set your brand apart from your competitors. And as Al Rai said, positioning is not what you do to a product, but it is what you do to the mind of the prospect. You need to find that differentiator to be able to stand out in the marketplace and stand for something in the minds of your customers. And that way your audience can remember you for something you want to be known for. Now, when you think of Amazon, what comes to your mind? You probably enjoy that quick delivery and excellent customer experience. So Amazon's positioning statement is the following. For consumers who want to purchase a wide range of products online with quick delivery, Amazon provides a one-stop online shopping site. Amazon sets itself apart from other online retailers with its customer obsession, passion for innovation, and commitment to operational excellence. Now, as a business, you can do many different things, but as a brand, you want to be known for one thing, not one product or service, but one idea. And that's why Amazon is a great example of brand positioning because while they'll sell many different products, they are clearly focused, or as they say, obsessed about customers. Now, another great example of a positioning statement, this time from the automotive space, would be Volvo. So Volvo started in Sweden in 1927, building sturdy vehicles to withstand rough roads. So safety engineering became a priority early on. For car buyers seeking maximum safety, Volvo cars provide the most protective and secure driving experience through pioneering innovations. So while other automakers focus on power, performance, or luxury, Volvo championed safety as its core differentiator. True to this position, Volvo introduced new safety technologies like three-point seat belt and side impact airbags, which are now standard across the industry. Continued innovations allowed Volvo to maintain this position around safety. So in summary, a great differentiator creates a unique, memorable position. In your brand positioning, you will need to capture how you can uniquely meet your customers' needs versus your competitors. So that way, next time they're about to make purchasing decisions, it will help them navigate through a variety of choices. So now let's talk about brand personality. Now the goal of a brand's personality is to give a human side to your brand. 
so that your target audience can build a lasting relationship with your brand, just as if it was a person. Because you see, certain personalities attract each other and others repel each other. And sometimes it's also about the customer's aspirational identity. So let's take Harley as an example. Harley Davidson has a macho, rebellious, America-loving, freedom-seeking personality. And this personality directs all the visual as well as verbal communication. And you can see that in all brand touch points, in marketing campaigns and so on. And they always convey that brand personality in everything they do. And a great way to define your brand personality is by using archetypes. So Harley is the older archetype, but Rolex on the other hand is the ruler archetype which exemplifies a personality that is more sophisticated. It's about status and prestige. So Rolex was founded in 1905 in Switzerland with a mission to make high precision watches. And over the decades, Rolex has cultivated a distinctive brand personality, one that exudes luxury, status and exclusivity and one that understands elegance and sophistication. So basically, wearing a Rolex displays power and prestige. So this personality attracts accomplished people who see themselves as success or those who want to portray that image to others. So in summary, brands build affinity through shared identity. And that's why the brand you choose is often a vehicle to express yourself. So when your brand personality is clearly defined, your customers are more likely to understand and connect with your brand. Now let's talk about brand voice. So a brand's voice basically brings personality to life through words. Now the goal of defining your brand voice is to set the guidelines for how you want the brand to sound to others. Now Tiffany is not just about shade of baby blue, it's also about their well-defined tone of voice. Now, Tiffany's brand voice is witty, elegant, and classic. And their content and social media teams work together for voice consistency between social posts and branded content. Historically, Tiffany's voice as a brand was witty, and Twitter allows us to bring that back, said Hong, who leads the team of art directors and copywriters. So in every single communication, Tiffany's brand voice is very elegant and classic, and people connect with that. And also, Netflix exemplifies a unique voice that engages its audience. So founded in 1997, Netflix pioneered DVD rental by mail. And when streaming emerged, Netflix became a leader in on-demand entertainment. So to connect with its youthful target audience, Netflix crafted a fun, playful, and exciting brand voice. So Netflix uses a natural, friendly language, the one that you would use when talking to your friends. So they are not afraid to crack jokes and banter with their audience and they also use vibrant words to capture the thrill of movies and shows. So in summary, a distinctive voice builds brands because it helps you develop a consistent way of conveying your message to your audience. So just to sum up, your personality and your voice work together to represent the how how your message is delivered. Now, finally, let's talk about brand tagline as the last and the seventh element of brand strategy. Now, the goal of a brand's tagline is to convey the brand's spirit in the shortest way possible. So basically, you need to distill your brand persona into a selection of very few and concise, memorable words. Now, your brand tagline should be also in line with your positioning which is primarily for internal purposes only, while tagline is for external purposes. It's customer facing. For example, Nike's positioning is perfectly manifested to the outside world by the tagline, just do it, which skillfully tells the brand story and is able to inspire and bond customers to the Nike brand. And by featuring numerous notable athletes, Nike is able to attract customers and create that desirable image. And another great example of a tagline that condenses the brand's essence into a sticky memorable motto would be think different that perfectly exemplifies Apple's unique approach. So Apple was founded in 1976 by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak as a pioneer in personal computing. However, by the late 1990s, the brand had lost its way. To refocus Apple on creative thinking and innovation, the Think Different campaign was launched in 1997. And Think Different told the world that Apple champions new perspectives, originality and ingenuity, while others follow the head, 
Apple thinks beyond the limitations. So this logo perfectly aligns with Apple's positioning as a creator of visionary technology that empowers people. And it also evokes Apple's personality, rebellious, radical, and daring. So an impactful tagline captures your brand spirit and tells your brand story in just a few memorable words. Okay, so that was the last example on my list. So I gave you 14 examples of strategies behind famous brands. So you see the world's most successful companies develop brand strategies that inform everything from product development to customer service to sales, marketing and beyond. So in this cluttered and hyper competitive world, you need some clarity on those key elements of brand strategy. Now, how do you develop a brand strategy? So first off, you can run a workshop with your or your client's team and brainstorm and define all of those key elements. And everything that you need in order to run this workshop effectively you can find in my online course where I share with you how to run each and every single exercise step by step. And by the way, I just updated my course with the book of prompts for ChatGPT, which will help you leverage AI. So you can get better ideas and do some deeper research and in general, just get there faster. But anyways, I would love to hear from you about your experience in brand strategy development. Do you find these examples inspiring at all? Will you use tools like ChatGPT to help you refine your ideas? Either way, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips on branding, strategy and design. Until next time, this was Alex Borinchak from Big Design. And I will see you in the next video.